In the next part, we will present some realizations and collaborations uh, supported by Into Power. Now, our first speaker is project manager of the energy cluster Denmark. He will tell us more about the online platform testfacilities.eu a platform that makes test facilities accessible to SMEs. You could actually compare it a bit to Airbnb. It's a kind of search engine with all the facilities in the North Sea region with all their characteristics. We learn more about it from Christian Munk Jensen. Hello, my name is Christian. Um, I'm a project manager at Energy Cluster Denmark and I expect that my presentation will be up shortly. Um, I'll tell you a bit about, uh, briefly about Energy Cluster Denmark, and then about why it's necessary to carry out a, a, such an a online platform or make such an online platform, and then I'll walk you through the website itself. Um, it's a bit blurry for me, but I guess the rest of you can see it okay. Yep. So here you can see a few facts about Energy Cluster Denmark. The core of what we do is to uh, initiate and facilitate uh, joint development projects uh, with uh, concrete product output, such as a, a drone that can deliver packages for technicians offshore, offshore or something. But uh, we also do sort of more supportive uh, projects for innovation like this one. Um, here's a brief overview of our members. So, um, looking at like why did we at all start to consider a, a website for test facilities? If you look on the left, uh, there's a picture of uh, my house that I bought a few years ago and uh, some apartments in, uh, in Hamburg. Uh, and on the right, you can see some test facilities. And what do they have in common? Maybe you're thinking. But when I wanted to, uh, up, uh, it's it can be hard to find the right house uh, like to buy or the right apartment to rent on your holiday. Similarly, it's hard to find the right test facility. It's an, and it's usually quite costly. And buying a house or building a house or building a test facility is a large capital investment. But in both cases, utilization is fairly low. I mean, except now in the houses where we're all sitting at home. Uh, but a couple of years ago, when I bought my house, I, like I went to a website, I typed in between this many and this many square meters, this area, this many rooms. Uh, I wanted to say wood somewhere in the description uh, because I wanted to live near some woods. And then I got a list of 30 houses in that area. Uh, I saw a few, uh, bought one. If you compare that with test facilities where, uh, or like, it, and it's the same when I rent an apartment with Airbnb, for example. But if you want to get a good overview of test facilities, at least there, there didn't used to be any easy way to get that overview. Uh, and that's why we make, we've made test facilities to the EU. But if we look a bit more at sort of the, the challenge that we are addressing here, uh, we carried out uh, a lot of a fair amount of interviews and uh, a questionnaire. And you can see that it was primarily uh, corporate or primarily private enterprises and more smaller organizations than large ones that responded. Um, and uh, most people agree that test facilities are important. Um, and uh, if you look on uh, here, we can see that uh, owners of test facilities, and there's uh, quite a few and of all different sizes of companies, often naturally carry out tests for themselves. But uh, quite a lot do not carry out any tests, like any external testing using their test facilities. And if we look a bit more into that, um there's uh, the fewer test facilities a company has the less likely they are to carry out uh, tests for others um, so there's a there's an interesting fact there um and if we look at how people are finding test facilities it's uh, like personal network is a clear uh, uh, number one and then uh, searching on google an internal company overview or people's own web pages. If you imagine if I had had to rely on that when I wanted to find a house to buy, like 
calling uh, people I knew and asking if they knew someone was selling a house uh, or looking on searching on Google for people's own websites advertising their house. It would be a daunting task to say at least, just like finding the right test facilities. Uh, and uh, very few people think strongly agree that it's easy to find and access the right test facility. And a, a fair amount thinks that it's to some degree uh, not that hard. But if we then look into, like at, in the interviews, we could see that the main barrier is actually just knowing that the test facility is there. And uh, this graph should be read as, like, uh, I know the relevant test facilities owned by, and then in the upper left corner, companies in my region. Uh, and then you can see that about like a little more than 15% think they know them very well. And on the other end, uh, around 10% don't know relevant test facilities owned by companies in their region. Like they don't know it at all. It's not all just relevant test facilities. And then as we go to a country and uh, the North Sea region and uh, Europe, it becomes less and less. And I would even say this is extremely optimistic. I have, I have never met these people who know all the relevant test facilities in Europe uh, very well. Uh, that, that would of course made life easier, but I haven't been able to find these in uh, and actually uh, make them tell me where they are. Then if you look to the right, um, so, yeah, so what I'm saying here is that I think people are being a bit optimistic about how well they know test facilities. Um, if you look at the right, it looks uh, it's the same, but for research uh, institute, test facilities owned by research institutions. Uh, and, and at first glance, it looks similar. But when you look closer, there's no dark green color. There's actually just one person who think that uh, he or she knows test facilities owned by research institution in his or her region very well. So I think that should be sort of a wake up call for uh, research institutions that um, uh, like at least it's an obvious way to start a collaboration project with a company uh, for because they know that you have a test facility that would be relevant for them to access. One example of it is that I talked with a, like an engineering company that had been working with flow models for wind for many years, uh, and they didn't know of the wind tunnel in a university just an hour's drive away from them that would fit their development project pretty well. So. I, there's a huge knowledge gap here. Uh, so to summarize, test facilities are important, uh, but many that own test facilities don't carry out external tests. They are mainly found by Googling and personal network. Only one third agrees that it's easy to find and access test facilities. And few have a good overview of the test facilities that already exist. And only one respondent and knew the relevant test facilities known by research institutions in their own region very well. Um, so uh, to address that uh, challenge, we have uh, made test facilities to the EU, and it's uh, in many ways very similar to Airbnb, uh, that you can go in and you search, you find a test facility, but then we just give you the contact information and then you'll have to settle the rest yourself. We're not involved in any booking of test facilities and we don't ask any, like, it doesn't take any commission or something. Uh, but naturally, there's a, there's a bigger difference in between two pull test facilities and uh, a pull test facility and a wind tunnel than there is between an apartment and a house. So there's one category for each test facility. So if you click on pull test, then you can see the pull tests. Then you can filter, like, uh, at least this many, many tons pull, uh, because that's what you need. Maybe not more than a thousand, because then it'll be too expensive. Then you get a list and you can go in and see sort of a quick overview and there's a free text field where they can edit what ends what they want and then there's the contact information. So it's like a pretty, it's just a, like Airbnb. Uh, we also carried out some webinars and test facilities where uh, we could go a bit more into depth. And uh, I think also the, the big interest for this with more than 250 participants from 24 different countries shows that there is an interest in knowing more about test facilities. Uh, so to summarize, 
the advantage of test facilities to the EU is that anyone can enter their test facility into the website, no matter how many they have or who they are, or where they are placed. Uh, one test facility should usually be one listing. Um, so it's not, we have wind tunnels, but we have one wind tunnel that can do this, one wind tunnel that can do this, etc. cetera. Uh, because this enables the detailed search function where you can filter so you only see the ones that you need. Um, thank you for your time. I'll be available for questions in the uh, test facility uh, booth, if you have any. Thank you, Christian, for this clear explanation. Now, we love to make things more concrete with a testimonial, a testimonial of the CEO of Polytech in Denmark. Polytech is one of the test facilities that is on the platform, and because of being on that platform, they got new customers. Now, here is for you a video on that story from Mats Kierkegaard. It's going to benefit test facility owners and also the industry. Having a website like this customers will know that they can find these services very, very easily. And they'll know this is the place to look when they're looking for expanded testing capabilities. This is, uh, this is our newest uh, test installation where we are able to test uh, rain erosion performance on various uh, materials and substrates uh, with the highest speed available in the business. Being part of Intropower has made it possible for Politech to to broaden our uh, partnerships uh, with other European uh, test facilities. Uh, we have created uh, new partnerships actually. Uh, we have um, established new relations with customers and suppliers. We are now uh, helping other test institutes in, in Europe with our uh, competences. So all in all it has been a win-win situation. Jeez. And there's more. A second way to push your SME to the next level is by listening to webinars about test facilities. Now, together, um, Simon Johannes Stark, the Technology and Innovation Advisor of DMAC in the Netherlands, and Tom Bauer, who's here, who's Business Developer of the Blue Accelerator Belgium, they will tell you more about it. Okay, hello, my name is Tom Bauer, I'm from the POM West Flanders in Belgium and we indeed uh, operate and own actually uh, one of those test facilities. Um, but let me first introduce uh, my colleague in a way, uh, Simon, uh, who will tell a little bit more about uh, test facilities. I think before I hand it over to you, uh, Simon, I think it's important to, to emphasize the, the, the key relevance uh, of uh, test facilities. Um, they, they connect SMEs with the larger players and in that way accelerate the innovation that is still going on obviously in, in the offshore wind energy as well as in other uh, marine energy developments. Um, but let's start with uh, DMAC. Um, my first question is what unique ac uh, aspects are there of the DMAC facility? Over to you, Sam. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Tom, for the introduction and for the question. Um, I think one key word that you just mentioned is accelerate, and I think uh, this describes us as an organization pretty well. Um, we're located in the hub of Sreveningen. We see a nice picture of it there in the background as well, um, from which we are offering much more than just testing services. Um, we are quite a diverse team um, with experts from investment and financing, uh, business and market development, as well as engineering and certification. And this actually gives us the quite unique opportunity to be placed right at the interface between technology development and commercial development. And that allows us to help companies exactly across this kind of transition. How can DMAC support developers? So just to give a few examples um, around the testing, of course, uh, we can uh, we can do um, give them support in something that you've uh, just seen in the in the showcase of the test facility website as well. We can help them finding the right test sites and laboratories for their needs, but also prepare test plans, of course. Um, but for larger scale demonstrations, we actually have a quite strong expertise also when it comes to certification. And there we are offering a technology qualification process 
which is um, which can be seen as a preparation for achieving prototype or type certification, especially for novel technologies. Um, and also, I think something very unique that we offer is in case of larger, more expensive demonstrations um, or projects or just company development in general, that we are offering support for capital raise campaigns um, where we offer our expertise and investment um, through an investment readiness assessment. Mm -hmm. And at what specific stage can DMAC support developers? So, as I just said, um, yeah, our strength is uh, very much coming into play during the engineering and optimization stage of development. And from there on, really all the way through to full commercialization. Um, however, also for early stage and concept developments and SMEs, which are at this, uh, at this point of their development, we are still very happy to share our experiences, for example, uh, with development strategies. But uh, most importantly, I think we can help developers connecting to a number of EU funded projects that we are working in, uh, many of which we are leading, uh, which also include access to test facilities. And most importantly, we can help them connect to the right partners from our network, where we have a lot of test facilities um, there at hand, like, for example, uh, the Blue, Blue Accelerator, um, which is uh, run by you um, and the and the Pont Westlander. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, just uh, turn around and uh, just ask you a few questions about the Blue Accelerator and give you a chance to introduce that yourself as well. Sure. So um, about the Blue Accelerator, actually, what, what do, uh, do you do and how does it differentiate maybe from other similar test facilities? Yeah, the, the Blue Accelerator is an, an offshore platform with an exclusion zone, actually not far away from the location where we are now. Um, so in a sense, uh, offshore um, from the uh, Belgium uh, coast. Um, we focus as a uh, platform on the TRLs 4 to 7, so uh, roughly in the middle to the end, to the up to the pre-commercial stage. And in terms of technology, we focus on roughly floating devices. So that can be uh, wave uh, converters, that can be floating PV uh, devices, um, but certainly also uh, multi-use applications where agriculture is combined with one energy uh, form as well. But besides that, also we have um, uh, other opportun opportunities to have uh, corrosion testing uh, and well, a whole host of other uh, type of tests that can be applied. How we differentiate is that we have an, uh, a quick access process. It is a pre-consented uh, permitting process. So that means if a developer wants to put a device into the water, it can be um, managed uh, very quickly. Uh, besides that, we have also other uh, specific support services, all in all to, uh, to create in a way a one-stop shop uh, approach. Uh, which I think is a great benefit, especially for the SMEs and the smaller players to not bother uh, themselves with all the the requirements that are needed, uh, the, the legal and other aspects. I hope that answers and is there like a specific type of developers that you focus on? You already mentioned the TRL, but uh, is there other unique uh, points that you can offer to them? We focus, uh, well, we have a, a, a pretty broad focus uh, that, uh, that varies from large in industrial players to small and large SMEs, to project consortia, to any other type of uh, academic uh, institution or, or knowledge center that, that, we, that wishes to, to test as well as to demonstrate. And we focus on both, both the, the rather short-term testing uh, as well as the long, longer term and demonstration. I think with that we have given an, a brief overview of what the two different uh, test facilities are doing. And I would like to hand it over back to the host, uh, Caroline. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom and Simon. Thank you. Now, thirdly, there is an offshore wind energy MBA. An MBA for people who already work in the offshore wind industry, organized to bring them to the next level. Professor Dr. Wolfgang Lucas of the University of Applied Sciences Bremerhaven knows more about it. I am here on behalf of him because the wind energy MBA is the result of uh, uh, activity mainly of two universities, the Business Academy Southwest, SPIAC and Bremerhaven University.
DFR biases. Um, uh, I would like to um, start with the chess which we had in this field. Uh, when we did worked on into power, uh, saw that still today is uh, uh, working uh, with a lot of technical challenges and a fast development. Nevertheless, we see the tracks get bigger and bigger. The proportion of energy, we heard it this morning, and the presentation of the minister gets more and more. And so the industry uh, is kind of a, a development process which is from all uh, 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 to uh, saturated and uh, developed industry. And that not technological, but it's managerial. Together with the cost reduction, you might remember we saw first uh, wind farm, uh, which will come without any subsidies and uh, uh, not just the environmental benefit, but as well the economic position of, of offshore requires those consequences of. Uh, what we, did we do? Uh, we formed advisory boards in Denmark and in Germany where we promote industry partners on board to really for what the industry needs. Uh, we developed together with them which uh, modules should be part of MBA. We developed content. And they helped us with the selection of uh, suitable lecturers for the uh, uh, modules in this MBA. And lastly, um, we uh, uh, handed a full concept uh, as a joint degree uh, program for accredited. Very proud to announce beginning of March, we received accreditation of this MBA. We were Within Interpower, strongly supported by the cluster organization in this project. Uh, um, next uh, step, I would like to go a little bit more into the uh, MBA, how it looks like. Uh, it uh, consists of nine modules and the master thesis. So you uh, uh, a formal MBA after uh, program, and what you see here from future scenarios and operational leadership, which are more management and strategic topics, to specific things like innovation. We heard about that a lot today about people management. Uh, we have a specific module on logistics. Um, we focus as well on the expansion. About uh, international owners, we look on the management of safety and risks, and last not least, of the economic creation of such a. I would like to dedicate a little bit. Maybe you remember your times at the university, sitting long time in seminars. Um, how our uh, MBA works. So it's. Uh, uh, where the lecturers present themselves. Then there is a reading page, uh, uh, literature as well as advanced literature for this module. Then after uh, uh, we address all over Europe, mostly uh, targeted at the North Sea region. They meet for two days uh, where they uh, change an uh, already focus on specific topics. of first workshop, and this is a special we have as well, uh, 
from business. We have a lecturer's team. Uh, Thank brings you, in Professor. A... Um, the connection is very, very difficult, but uh, oh. your PowerPoint, as you have presented, we will um, put that on our website so that uh, people can find all the information about the MBA. Thank you. Now, we go further with actually a testimonial about this MBA. The project manager of Deme Offshore, Frank Jonkere, attended a few models of the program and he shares these experiences with us in the next video. I'm uh, Frank Jonkere. I work as a project manager for Deme Offshore. Deme Offshore is a company specialized in um, offshore wind farm construction but we are also a total solution provider where we do the design, the construction, the engineering and the uh, installation of an entire wind farm. I was specifically interested in following an MBA course that can be linked to the, my day-to-day -day work and the industry that I'm working in. I, I also specifically like the fact that the courses are uh, organized in different cities or different places across the, the North Sea um, being the, the main region where I currently work. I really like the fact that there are two lecturers uh, per course, one with an industrial background and one with a more academical background that provides in fact the best of two worlds. On one hand we are given an academical background as an introduction to the course topic and on the other hand the industry expert guarantees that the cases are real-time based on the specific offshore wind energy business and are very accurate.